What's going on everyone? Adrian Alvarez here with the Nicola Group at Realty Executives Premier. Today we're very excited for another episode highlighting another business out here in Northwest Indiana. We're at Wild Rose Brewing Company out here in Griffith, Indiana. Very excited to go try it out, so let's go check them out. My name is uh, David DeYoung. I'm the, one of the owners and the brewer at Wild Rose Brewing in Griffith, Indiana. So first of all, I just want to say thank you for having us out here, letting us come in here. I uh, just want to ask you a couple questions. Uh, so what got you into the brewing company and, and getting to the point where you know you have this huge facility now? Well, basically uh, myself and, and a few neighbors were brewing in our garages and we just so happened to be drew, brewing on Wild Rose Lane in Sherville. Oh, and nice. that's where the name of the brewery became because we were we called ourselves Wild Rose Brewing when we were in our garages and yeah. then when we ultimately decided to uh, uh, make it a business we decided to just keep the name. Is there anything that specifically you feel people come to this place for? Any specific beers, menu items, things like that? We're a family friendly uh, brew pub. Gotcha. Uh, we allow all ages. We have a heated covered patio that uh, they can bring their human children and their pet children to. We're a brewery, we make our own beer, yeah. but we know that a lot of groups don't always have beer lovers with them. So we carry, um, I think like four or five different wines, uh, two reds uh, and uh, three whites. We um, have a cider that's always on from Cider Boys, uh, the different flavors that they have. We have uh, two cocktails that we uh, keg and serve on draft. So again, we, we try to appeal um, to you know a pretty wide audience of groups that might want to come here. Primarily pub food. Gotcha. Um, we have uh, we have a our fit most our most popular sandwich is a pot roast grilled cheese sandwich. Um, we hand cut our own fries. We make our own all our own sauces. Um, we have yeah. You know, again, it's primarily sandwiches. There's there's a few apps. We have a pub pretzel with beer cheese. Uh, that's pretty popular. Um, so yeah, it's it's. It's not a real complicated menu, but but we make as much as we can from scratch, and, and uh, um, we think it's pretty good. Do you have a favorite item, uh, drink-wise and food-wise? Oh, wise? drink-wise. Um, <laughs> yeah, since all the beers are my babies. So oh yeah, I, true, true. I, <laughs> I hate to pick favorites. I'm a big fan of the the pilsner that I make, the run of the pills. Gotcha. The big sexy is the Citra Hot Pale Ale. That's our most uh, our our best-selling beer. Um, it's the first one that we started canning. We can most of our beers now. We're available in uh, a bunch of the liquor stores in the local area. The, the Pyros Grilled Cheese was a sandwich that, that I, I designed when uh, we used to have a, a Korean short rib sandwich and the mm -hmm. short rib got too expensive to really um, be profitable on the menu. So then I wanted another braised meat uh, sandwich. So I, I decided to go with a, a traditionally made pot roast that, that we uh, shred in serve on Texas toast with provolone and that that must good too yeah no one's getting hungry back there anyway, <laughs> anyway. so you said you're one of the founders correct so there's yeah. a couple other people uh, tell us about that story on how like you guys knew each other and you just started making beer and then getting to this point or right. like was that always in the plans to eventually have you a know, brewery it, it wasn't really always in the plans um, we were like I said brewing in the garage it was initially uh, myself and, and a friend of mine Ed who unfortunately passed away several years ago already um, and then uh, the other partner Kevin uh, Cripple he, he joined shortly after Ed and I started brewing and we were kind of uh, obviously enjoying the camaraderie of hanging yeah. out in the garage and brewing some beer but it seemed like uh, in our opinion and a bunch of people that tasted it that it was uh, that it was a good product and um, Probably after a few too many beers, we said, "Hey, we should open a brewery." Yeah, it's usually how it happens. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, when when we made that decision, there really wasn't much going on in you know the region. Yeah. As far as beer goes, we had Three Floyds, which is huge, obviously. Uh, we had Crown that had been around for a while, but there wasn't really the the amount of offering that mm -hmm. there is now. And, uh, so it seemed like an opportunity, and Griffith was a, a town that was actually trying to attract a brewery to town. Gotcha. Uh, so yeah, it seems like the right time to do it. So today, the product that we're trying is actually a Pilsner. So if you could tell us a little bit about it, Dave. It's uh, called Run to the Pills. It is a, uh, it's, 
It's a Czech style Pilsner, kind of loosely described. Uh, it uses the same kind of uh, yeast and grains as, as a Czech Pilsner would. It has the same hop. It has a little more hop presence than what might typically be expressed in the style, but it, it makes it nice and crisp and uh, refreshing, I think. I think so too, so I could, I could cheers to that. Thank you, Dave. Cheers, man. And that's the, the coolest part about it is, is even if there is some kind of feeling of competition, we're all, in my opinion, doing things so differently. Yeah, yeah. That it, it yeah, obviously, you know, the guy down the street in Wolf Falls, he's, he's started as primarily a German brewer, and he has a, a much more, I don't say refined, but not as expressive as, mm -hmm. as ours. So I'm like, people that really love this place probably aren't going to feel as comfortable there, and people that really love that environment yeah. probably, you know, aren't, I mean, there probably some crossover, but you're going to have one that you prefer based on uh, you know, what's being brewed and what's, you know, how, how it's presented. Uh, yeah, and I think that goes into, like, knowing your audience, too, mm -hmm. like, not trying to go outside of, like, right. trying to attract people or, that just aren't Or even people. just trying to express yourself and hope mm -hmm. someone yeah. appreciates it, you know, because I can't, I can't, I couldn't do what he does. Yeah. Because I'm not that guy. I, I feel at the end of the day, like, whatever business you're in, if you're able to genuinely do what you want right. to do, that's so much better than doing, like, oh, yeah. the robotic, this and is I, what I'm I supposed to do. I tell kids all the time, I'm like, don't do something that you think is gonna make you a certain amount of money or something like that. Yeah. Do something you like doing, because I mean, I was a freaking accountant and technology manager before I opened this place. Yeah. I've never been in hospitality or had a restaurant or, or a bar or anything. I just that was not what I was happy with. Yeah. When I was in high school, it was like, okay, well, accounting math isn't really that hard, and it's supposed to pay decent, so I'll go into it. I'm sitting in my cube and I'm like, this really sucks. Yeah, no, I, yeah. <laughs> my head broker, Alex, always talks about that too. He's like, dude, I love business owners because they're like the definition of like, just take a bet on mm -hmm. yourself and, you know, do something you like, whether you, whether you make beer, you like, you know, detail cars or whatever right. the case it is. Like, you can do something for yeah. yourself. So I always thought it was interesting to talk to other entrepreneurs in the area that mm -hmm. made something out of nothing, pretty much. Yeah. What would you say? Since being in business here is your favorite part of running this place. Uh, just if you had to pick one thing. Uh, yeah, if I had to I pick one tell. thing, it's uh, it's just seeing the the people that are new here, that are regulars here, you know, enjoy what we do, and uh, it, it makes the hard work you know kind of worth the effort. I think when you have someone who runs a business who is actually giving value to their people, but like. You know, like you said, you can't even pick a favorite because they're all good, all these mm -hmm. drinks. So that's that's like what you want to hear from a business owner, from a brewer too. Um, I have a couple buddies who are in the brewing field, still on the come up there, but you know, I think people like you are who they look up to because they're trying to get to this point and for you to have this place, I think it's just awesome. And for you having us here, I really appreciate it, Dave, and just thank you for that talk. I appreciate you of taking course. the time to come of out course. with us. Thank you. And again, guys, this is Adrian Alvarez with the Nicola Group. I Rio to Executive's premiere. Thank you so much to Dave and Wild Rose Brewing Company out here in Griffith, Indiana. Um, again, thank you so much for watching this episode. And if you have any recommendations or suggestions of anything that you would like us to try, uh, please let us know. And thank you again for watching.